Hey everyone, Mario coming at you with another video. And I bet some of you are probably wondering, looking at this island going, what you actually went? And yes, the glasses probably give it away. I don't know if it's just me, but I kind of, with how these are, look, I kind of look like a big Roy Orbison. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, I did go and see Jurassic Park in 3D. As you can tell from how long ago the movie came out in 3D, I went to the cheap theater. And, because they just recently renovated for 3D, adding uh, new screens and projectors in, so it's good. I'm glad they did that, just in case the movie is only available in 3D and did that. I wish they had done this for Dread 3D, so. Because that's one I actually wouldn't have mind the new movie scene in 3D, because I hear the effects are good, but the marketing with that, of course, you know, is probably why it flopped, you know, just catering to the 3D gimmick. Anyway, here's my ticket. I uh, paid only 550 to go see that movie. I don't know some of you are probably going, you lucky sob. Because that's with the 3D charge. Normally it'd be only four something if it was just a normal standard definition, but in 3D, yep, in there. That's, for those of you who don't know, that's less than the price of a normal ticket at the normal theater I go to without the 3D charge. <laughs> so I should tell you how cheap this theater is. And that's why I like it. It's an option. A little bit further, it's double the distance. Because it's about eight miles to Temecula from where I live, and it's only four to the theater I normally go to. But it was worth it to see this movie because I had fun. Because I don't know where it'd be on the list, but Jurassic Park is one of my favorite films of all time. And I was too young to see it in theaters. I came out in '93, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, '93. When? When in '93 actually? June '93. So I was four at the time. So didn't get to see it, so it's one of those films like, uh, I can't believe I didn't get to go see it. Or if I did, I don't remember. Because I know I saw Lion King when it came out, and it was around the same time, but I don't remember seeing this. But So finally being able to see it on the big screen, uh, it's one of those things I was gl glad I was able to, to see it. And I don't know if it's the fact that uh, I've only ever watched it on VHS, I've never watched it when it was on TV, I've never watched it on DVD. But the movie, well, obviously the movie will look clearer since when compared to a VHS, but... I just could appreciate the film a lot more on there. I could appreciate the visual effects more. I could appreciate how the film was shot more. Even without, even the 3D effects notwithstanding, I could appreciate everything a lot more. Even the acting, I could appreciate a little bit more, especially in all the sound effects, like the dinosaur no noises, especially the T-Rex and Velociraptors. I could appreciate it a lot more hearing it from the special thing. And uh, I remember talking with my buddy Efri about this movie in passing once, one, one time on Skype, and I can see what he means about going from watching this movie in the theater and watching it on TV, how it being not impressive. I can see now what he means by that. But in going in reverse order, I can appreciate the film more. And this is just one thing I noticed. I don't know if this is something that they cut a little bit of it when they put it on VHS and maybe restored it to the DVD or just restored it for this release. But I noticed, noticed a couple extended dialogue sequences because... I remember before in the scene where Nedry's getting bribed, he would on my VHS he just goes, "Don't get cheap on my Dotson," and then when Dotson's getting the money, there's no more dialogue before it cuts away. In this one, he went, "That was Hammond's mistake." Right afterwards, and he's eating the chip at that. I'm like, that's new. And then there was a couple other small ones, but that's the one that sticks out. So I was wondering. Anyone, if anyone knows the answer to that, let me know. But. As for the 3D effects themselves, it varied. I mean, there were a few parts where it looked good, very good. Like, mostly, the sh mostly of course, is the obvious 3D stuff moving towards the screen. But it's mostly, like, when Spielberg would move the camera. Because we all know he can move the camera. Like, in Jaws, we all know the famous scene in Jaws, you know, the pa Jaws pan. And he does pan in this movie sometimes. Like, the, f the first time you can see that they did put a little bit of effort into the, 3D, into the 3D in this film is when we first see... Muldoon with the shotgun there. It looks pretty good. But for the most part, the 3D is like just okay. Like some things look good, some things don't. So the 3D thing wasn't worth it. And I had a feeling the 3D wasn't going to be worth it. The thing that was worth this money is being able to watch this movie on the big screen and appreciate it more. And I know the film did make money in the re release before this, which, as you guys know, it's a film I like, so obviously I'm happy on that. But there's a, no a broader reason why. And it has nothing to do with the 3D gimmick in and of itself, because you guys know I hate 3D gimmick, this gimmick, and I hope it dies soon, but I hope that this, all these movies are re-releasing from the past with three, in 3D, I hope that this tells Hollywood it's not the 3D that is getting people into the seats, it's the fact that they're re-releasing 
older movies. But some movies, somebody probably thinks they should remake, but they're not going to because of who's behind it, like this movie. I think they're not going to remake any of Spielberg's movies until after he's dead. He's just one of those directors who's like, ah, you want to remake Spielberg? Like, look at Hitchcock. The only person that could remake Hitchcock when he was alive was Hitchcock. <laughs> you know, anyway, I'll see if anyone gets what I mean by that. But, with this, hopefully it will show that they should re-release the movies. Instead of remaking Total Recall, you should have just re-released it. Instead of remaking Robocop, you should have just re-released it. Because not only does it does it guarantee money, because obviously someone's going to go see it, despite the marketing money, you'll at least break even with the marketing money, but also you don't have to put out that initial big investment. Well, you semi do when you convert it, for, convert it to 3D, which is why I think that's a waste of time, but when you remake a movie, you're spending 20 million plus, depending on what movie you're making. Like Total Recall, I think costs around 30 and up, maybe 50 million. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but they didn't even. I don't. If I remember correctly, I think they barely broke even with that. Now imagine if they had re-released the original. They would have made that, and that would have been on top of what Total Recall made when it was first released. So it would have been just money on top of money. If they had re-released Total Recall in theaters, I would have gone and seen it. Maybe not in the normal theater, but I definitely would have gone and seen it in the cheap theater. If they were to re-release RoboCop tomorrow, I would go see it. If they were to re-release, well, now that the theater's got it, I'm going to say this. If Lucas, when Lucasfilm does get around to re-releasing Empire and Jedi in the theater, despite the fact it's in 3D, I probably will go see it, because those are the only two of the Star Wars films I have not seen in theaters. Granted, I would, I would appreciate it more if it was the original cuts of the films, but... Beggars can't be choosers with that, but the point is, re-releasing the films would do would make the money. Hollywood did it in the past before, just even in the infancy of home video during the 80s and early 90s, they still really re-release movies every once in a while. In fact, they re-release Song of the South in theaters. It's that one Disney movie that the only thing they even acknowledge now is the song zippity doo -Dah. Every other thing in the movie they try to ignore, because, you know, the racist, the racist undertones of the movie. Because we know that movie, you know what I'm talking about. But they should re-release more movies. I would love, like I would, I'll probably do another video on this on films. I would love to see. I would love to see double billings of movies, like re-release some, like around Halloween, re-release old horror movies in theaters. Even if you're only doing it in select few, like I know that they around the anniversary of Halloween they re-released it, but they should have done a broad re-release. How many of you out there who are horror fans would love to have gone and seen Halloween in the theaters on the anniversary of the film? They should do it more like when they did the My Bloody Valentine remake, even though I hear that it's actually one of the decent ones. How many of you would have gone and paid to see the original be re-released? I didn't really know much about it, so I can't raise my hand there, but if I had known, I would have. And, um, what was the only thing we know in the movie? Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. Instead of a remake, how many people would have gone to... Well, I actually did pay to see the remake in theater, so I'm kind of guilty of that, but... I would have paid to go see the original. I definitely would have gone to go see the original. Hellraiser. I'd pay to go see Hellraiser in the theater just to see how those effects look on the big screen. I mean, I could, I could probably, I'll probably compile a list of it, but... The fact is, re-releases, you're still going to make money, especially if it's a film that people know about and actually has a big fan base. Anyway, video over. Anyway, if you guys actually want my in-depth thoughts on the fi on this film itself, my review is still up. But uh, last thing, in conclusion, 3D was so-so, but the theater experience for the film was great, and that's it.